Oh, I praise my God. Yes, last week I preached about the man that was the, the lame man, the paralyzed man on a stretcher. And he was dropped by four men through the roof. They pushed away the tiles, so I don't know what they've done in those days. And they dropped him right at the feet of Jesus. It was in Mark 2. In Mark 2, 5, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My son, your sins are forgiven. Oh, that's the best words ever to receive from the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. And verse 6, But some of the teachers of the religious law, and who were sitting there, said to themselves, in that's now verse 7, What? This is blasphemy. Who but God can forgive sins? You see, at that time, those religious people, the teachers of the religious law, they didn't acknowledge Jesus. He was right amongst them. A peace from heaven was right amongst him. And can you then, and can you imagine the atmosphere in the house where Jesus is? If he stepped right into your house this morning, physically, and you can see him with your eyes, what do you think will you experience? The glory of the Lord will fill your house. And so it was on that day, a day like today. There was no difference. But Jesus was there, and the house was packed with people inside out. And as I said last week, you know what? They came from all, everywhere, from the villages and everywhere. Because Jesus was there. But because Jesus was there, they didn't recognize him, not all of them. They were there because they wanted to listen to what this man has to say today. And they were there to experience the signs and miracles and wonders. And, how the, and they saw with their own eyes how the paralyzed man was delivered from his stretcher. And so they said, this is blasphemy. And I realized that day, they were, they were after, they were after the gift. They were after the signs and wonders and miracles and even the words that Jesus spoke. But they were not after him. They didn't identify him as their savior who came to pay a price for them in the end so that they can have a life in abundance. They didn't recognize him. They didn't acknowledge him. They didn't identify him because he was just another man from Galilee who was there amongst them. And they wanted to see what is going on in this house today. And so it's with our lives, you know. So easily we can forget Jesus. You know at month end when your salary has been paid into your bank account, then we forget about the giver of the gift. But we are so excited about the gift. And we have already get, a, our budget is already ready. What we're going to do with this money? Our savings plan is waiting, whatever. But we forget the giver of that gift. We forget the, the, the giver who is providing for us. Month after month and day after day, we forget about him. You know what? What we have actually to do is we must put him first on our budget. We must put him first on our, on our list because he, the giver of the gifts, needs our tithes, a tenth of our offering, our money. Because we have to honor him that for once again this month, he has provided for us. Once again this month, he was there for us. 
and still we have a, a job, still we have a monthly income, but so easily we forget the giver of the gifts and we are after the gift. And my word for you today is, it's not about the gifts. It's all about the giver. I want to tell you this. In the garden, in the garden where Jesus was buried, a young woman stood. Her name was Mary, Mary Magdalene. She stood there looking for Jesus because the grave was empty. And John 20, 15, Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? She thought he was a gardener and said, Sir, if you have taken him away, Please tell me where you put him so that I may fetch him. She was looking for the giver of the gifts. She was looking for the one who delivered her from seven demons. He was the one who, who, was, she, who, who delivered her from her slavery. She was looking for the one, the giver of the gifts. John twenty sixteen. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned in a step and exclaimed, Rabboni, which means my teacher. Well, the one who taught her so many lessons. The one whom she thought had died is standing right in front of her. And she was looking for a bridegroom. For a heavenly bridegroom. And she went to the disciples and she said these words. I saw the Lord. He's not dead. He's alive. She was after the giver of the gifts. Song of Solomon 3 verse 4 says so beautifully. I have found the one whom my soul loves. And she found him. She found the one whom her soul loved on that day. A few years ago, I, I wrote the following words in my Bible. Depart from yourself. Get away from yourself. Then you will find him. And the meaning of that is, depart from yourself. Get away from your unbelief like the, the Pharisees that day. Get away from your unbelief system. Get away from the lust of the flesh. Get away from your own desires. And then you will find him. You have to drop everything. Leave everything. Search for him. Look for him. And you will find him. Matthew 6 verse 33 in the TPT Bible, this is so beautiful. He says, the Bible says, constantly seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. Constantly. Not now, not for today only, but day after day, hour after hour, see God's kingdom and his righteousness and then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. What it means that makes everything in your life that is so important, your desires, your plans for today, your desires for this year and next year, and whatever you want to do, just leave it. It's not important. What is important is to seek His face, to seek the Lord, and then all the other things will be added unto you. Refuse to worry about tomorrow, says the word. But deal with each challenge that comes your way. One day at a time, tomorrow will take care of itself. Let's forget about our plans and our desires. 
Let's get away from ourselves, as I wrote in my Bible. Let's get away of our plans and desires and let's seek His face. Seek first the kingdom of God and all the other things will be added unto you. Let's seek Him and let's acknowledge, acknowledge Him as your Savior, as your Deliverer. It's not about the gifts. It's about the giver of the gifts. God is so amazing. Although the world is living just for themselves, we are the bride of Christ. We have been bought with a price. And Jesus has risen from the grave so that we can live in abundance. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added to you. This is my message for you today. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth with all the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 to 14. Take care, look after yourself. Seek the giver of the gifts in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen.